RGB gets slightly less sucky, a Steam Deck got stuck into a keyboard, and AMD is the best on the planet. They're number one. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, July 9th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about the addition of Asus into the Windows Dynamic Lighting RGB Club, which has been featured by a bunch of different companies up until this point, but it's essentially the synchronized place where RGB can now be controlled via Windows 11 instead of having to download every abysmal RGB software under the face of the sun. Razer's been there, ASRock's been there, MSI, Logitech, HyperX, but now Asus with their Aura is beta testing this, at least with a couple of their motherboards, 600 and 700 motherboard series. That's AMD and Intel, respectively. You wouldn't know the difference because they get all confusing and they changed their numbering schemes and the AMD is not even going to have a 700 series. They're skipping to 800 series. That's great. Good branding, good numbers. So Asus is testing this out, but hopefully this will mean that there's just more synchronicity when it comes to all of the lightings, making it so that it's happening in one place and you don't have to chase down every piece of malware that you want installed. But speaking of Windows 11, let's talk about FP11, which has nothing to do with an operating system, but rather has to do with the size of AMD's package, specifically the Strix Halo package that we're expecting to come out for their next gen APUs. This is supposed to be the big chip, the one that has 16 cores, as well as having a massive RDNA 3.5 GPU that's supposed to go toe to toe with allegedly an RTX 4070. And now we know roughly the size of this thing, and it's coming out to be about the size of Intel's current LGA 1700 socket. So an APU that's the size of Intel's full desktop CPU, but this is supposed to be a mobile chip that is also with Zen 5C cores, so it's the miniature ones, the ones that get shrunken down. So the fact that it's the same size as a desktop chip is kind of indicative of how much they're packing into here, especially with those 40 compute units of the RDNA 3.5 graphics. This is an exciting little APU. I want to get my hands on it. I can't wait till it launches. I'm eagerly awaiting Strix Point at the end of this month, and that's just going to be my little teaser taste until Strix Halo comes out, and I just will continuously sing the praises of APUs in little devices all of the time, which one of the great devices to put it in seems to be a keyboard. Wouldn't you want a keyboard that actually had your computer baked into it? Well, a company has decided that they're gonna move forward with that. Ling Long is announcing their AMD Ryzen 7 8840U keyboard, foldable keyboard, that has the full processor baked in as well as the typees. Unfortunately, it's not mechanical. It looks like it comes with membrane keys and likely doesn't have the best stabilizers in the world and every single time you type on it, you're kind of vibrating the fan a little bit that's cooling down that 8840. But it's a neat little implementation of having an on-the-go computer that can have up to a terabyte of storage, 32 gigs of DDR5, has USB 4 connectivity as well as a 60 watt hour battery coming with a 100 watt GAN charger. Just allow you to take your little PC on the go. You just pop this open, especially if you have one of those like VR XR glasses, whether that's from Nreal or Vitcher or any number Ray Neo, the companies that come out with those USB-C ones, you plug that into this keyboard and then you could have a full system that actually goes with you on the go. Additionally, it does have a little trackpad down here by the space bar and the arrow keys, just a little place for you to gently slide your finger to operate your operating system. It reminds me a lot of the same idea that Techno had with their Pocket Go, which was stuffing one of those APUs into a game controller. And the idea was you plugged in your glasses on top of that 8840HS with the screen happening to 215 inches. The Ling Long keyboard reminds me a lot of that, and I think that could be a plenty good idea for some people. And Reese is a plenty good idea for some people. Not me, but maybe you. Let's see if he's up to your taste. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well. And look at that, some deals right over there. Starting off with the Samsung 990 Evo NVMe M.2 SSD. Specifically, the one terabyte version is going for $79.99, making it $70 off. But then next up, we have this ASRock Challenger Radeon RX 7600 8 gig graphics card for only $229.99, making it $40 off. And then lastly, we have this Alienware 31.6 inch 4K 240 hertz quantum dot OLED curved gaming monitor for only $999.99, making it $200 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, 
I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal when it comes to AMD. They're better than Intel in more ways than one. We're gonna talk about how they're faster, but now let's talk about how they're just more recognizable. Coming out with the new Kantar Brands Most Valuable Brands report, the Kantar research indicates that AMD is more widely known than Intel is at the current moment. Nvidia beating both of them, but that's probably due to a lot of the stock surge that has happened recently. They're actually the number one increase in brand recognizability in the entire world, but that's still not enough to get them very high. They're only in sixth place when it comes to being one of the world's most recognizable brands. AMD, however, on the other hand, is currently in 41st place with Intel trailing them a little bit, coming in at 48th place. A lot of tech companies in the more notable upcoming brands. AMD finishing in at top 10 in terms of the top 10 brands that grew over the last year. Interestingly enough, last year it was very few tech brands that were some of the more well-known companies that rose. But obviously with the AI situation, they're becoming more and more well-known. This is honestly a huge shift, like a mental shift from how things used to be just even 10, 15, 20 years ago. I was writing a video recently with regards to the fact that AMD almost bought NVIDIA and they were gonna have Jensen be the CEO because that's what he demanded because AMD was looking at Intel being like, we're never gonna be able to take you down. You're so massive. Your marketing budget's greater than our R&D. There is no way we can compete. So let's join forces with the GPU company. They looked at NVIDIA. Jensen had the hubris of a man who became one of the best companies in the world and they didn't like that. So they went on and they bought ATI instead and that has led to AMD now being number one more recognizable than AMD. Their market cap is twice that of Intel. Then when you're looking at new CPUs that are coming out, they're the number one fastest single core CPU on the market. Not on the market yet, you still got a few weeks, but the 9900X looks like it's making its way into reviewers' hands and it's hitting Geekbench because of that. And that single core score that you're seeing right before your eyes of 3401 is the fastest that has ever existed with a mainstream desktop chip. And it comes in faster than the 14900K or KS, faster than the Ryzen 7000 series, faster than the 7900X, despite the fact that the 9900X consumes less power and makes it clear that it is going to be a powerful generation from AMD here. Now, we'll likely see over the coming weeks that, oh no, the 9950X is number one, or oh no, the 9700X is number one. Somebody got a higher Geekbench score. We're probably just gonna play a little bit of a game with increasing numbers over the next little bit as reviewers start benchmarking and it accidentally gets submitted, especially since it's not clear what specific conditions this 9900X was running under. Did it have PBO enabled? Was it actually manual? overclocked you know what cooling situation they had it's pretty unknown at this point where we land but it's a good harbinger for the fact that the 9000 series from AMD looks like it's going to be competitive allegedly at least according to the leaked retailers we're looking at lower pricing than the 7000 series even if it comes in at the exact same launch price it's going to make it rather competitive so I'm intrigued to see what happens with the 9000 series I want to pass the question off to you do you think you'll pick it up or are you still enticed by something like a 7800x 3d or are you waiting to buy something like a 7700x until the price goes down because the 9700X is coming out. Let me know down below in the comments while I respond to what you talked about yesterday. Me Bacon saying Apple was absolutely not refusing because the install button was too similar. They absolutely came up with that as an excuse to avoid legal trouble. Yes. Yes, we all know this, but they, that's what they said, all right? I'm just reporting what Apple's complaining about. I can't change that, I'm sorry. And then we got, it's Dion saying, just a dollar, L Intel. I hear you, I, I hear, I think I might've framed it inappropriately. The I don't think the burden of the contact frame being put on only high-end motherboards is on Intel. I think that's a decision that's being made by motherboard manufacturers. Maybe it's a collaborative thing where it's the extra dollar cost on a 65 dollar board just doesn't make a lot of sense specifically because it's not a real problem for people who are buying something like a 14 100 but that's likely a motherboard maker decision rather than an intel decision 
if I had to guess. And then Anon Silas saying, I filed to the FTC as well regarding the ASRock Phantom 7900 XTX regarding the hotspot heating issue. I attempted to reapply paste, which did nothing, end result being improper contact with the heatsink. My RMA resulted in them saying, I couldn't break the sticker to apply the paste. I called them multiple times for management to discuss the legality of the sticker and was ghosted. So I submitted a report with all the emails. The XTX is good on Alpha Cool's water block. Water cooling turning a loss to win. I am happy for you that the FTC is now doing something about that. I wish it was around before when you were struggling with all of that. And then we got Polar saying, I'm used to listening to you talking fast without stuttering. So hearing you getting lost and twisting your tongue while trying to talk was pretty funny. It happens a lot. We just happen to edit it out. That's, you don't hear my tongue twists because I restart. You don't hear me when I inhale too much air while I'm talking quickly. And then I kind of have to burp at the end of a sentence. If you really pay attention to hot news, you can tell there's some sentences that are cut short because I immediately have to like expel gas after the fact. It's not pretty. There's a lot of stuff that gets left on the cutting room floor that I am thankful for because Oh boy, otherwise uh, people would immediately click off the videos. And then we got Mostly Harmless saying, I'm disappointed that AMD didn't give us what we wanted, which was a 9950X3D with Vcash on all CCDs. It's like they hate money. To which the, the responses were essentially, there's probably a reason for this. There's probably some engineering technical difficulty that's the, the reason behind it. I don't think it has to do with hating money. I think it has to do with the fact that they can't figure it out at the current moment in a way that makes it better for everyone in a way that they can sell it. It's the same thing that happened when Intel was stuck on 14 nanometers people are like oh they just uh, they're they're not gonna do anything because they d hate money and they don't want to compete and the truth was it was an engineering failure it was not the fact that they didn't want to put amd to bed and like get be top of the market it was that they couldn't figure out how to produce 10 nanometers not how to engineer the chips but actually fabricate them and so what we're seeing you know with intel is they realized oh that was a mistake so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to tsmc to make lunar lake we're going to go to tsmc to make our gpus because having our fabrication facility with intel foundry services uh costs us a lot of competition and so maybe amd is seeing something similar where it's not necessarily that they don't want to give it to us, but rather it's a technical difficulty that they can't do it. And then we'll leave you with Chris Brisson saying, it's illegal to remove those do not remove tags on your pillows, just don't do it. I heard that, I heard I heard of one guy who did it and then he got arrested and then he, he doesn't, he's dead. Don't you know somebody like that, Kyler? They killed him. Who's they? Mattress. The mattress got him? The, oh, is it mattress firm? King. Matt, ooh, the Mattress King got him. And I'm gonna... Matrix it. Sorry. <laughs>